All right, now the small pieces. We have, uh, we have the main fabric cut out, but now I need to cut the lining for these. Uh, the only ones that need lining are the maniple, the chalice veil, and the stole. The burst does not need it, and I'll go through that shortly. It's self-lining, so we don't need to line, get cut lining for it. Uh, I think this piece is a large enough for the maniple. Uh, the maniple goes, gets, it's here, it's done on a fold, so I will do it on the fold here. And again, it gets seam allowance. So I'm just going to pin it the same. There is already seam allowance on the main fabric. So that's stupid of me. Didn't pull the fabric down far enough. All right. So I'm going to cut it here on the fold. So I line the fold of the pattern and the main fabric and the lining up together. I have this extra piece that was cut off when we did the, and I'm sure I'm sure that this is more than big enough for the chalice veil, but so we'll put this on here. Now again, the chalice veil was cut on the fold, so we'll fold this. Now you can cut all these out together, uh, but again, I happen to not like to move things after uh, when I lay out my my chasuble back or front on the lining. I don't like to move it once it's cut out until I have the lining done. So I just keep the pieces, and then afterwards I come back and cut them out. Versus, uh, not versus, uh, chalice veils vary in size. Some of them are larger than this, some of them are a little smaller. Uh, travel, travels, um, vestment sets tend to be small. The verse is small, the, ch the chalice veils are small. And some, it's, this is, this is your general size. But don't be surprised if you come across one that's larger or smaller. Now I just need the stole. Again, it has to be cut on folded fabric. I'm sure the top of this is probably off the range of the camera, but. Doesn't look any different than the bottom. All right, so.
that's the stole. Now, I want to show you something about the burst first before we start. All right, so now the next thing to do is to sew together the stole and the maniple. The lining, these come together. Now the maniple, if you cut the maniple on the fold, which I did, you don't have to sew it. It's already, it's already together. But you can't cut the stole that way. So you're going to have to, have, it has to be sewn together. So you see this was one long piece, and which is what you want. So we don't have to do anything with this. I don't have to do anything with this maniple. I can just put it aside. Same with the lining. The lining is cut as one piece. Don't have to do anything with it. I can just put it aside. Now the stole isn't. So let me take the pins out. So now you have two stole pieces and two lining pieces, both of which have to be joined. Now this is my right side, so it's going to be right sides together. This is your, your dressmaking um, technique thing, right sides together and then you're going to turn it inside out later. And I'm, it's going to be sewn across at this small end. About five eighths seam allowance. So I need to do that to this, and I need to do the same thing to this one. Right sides together. Put a seam across here. All right. And then they will, when I finish sewing these together, then I'll press the seams open and then uh, we'll be ready to put on the appliques. So uh, I'll be back after I've sewn these. Okay, we're ready to start putting pieces together. Here, uh, again, I went through at the beginning of the video well, the seminar video, anyway. Uh, things that you need. And um, these are the pieces that you need for the, for the small pieces. You need the two burst boards for your burst. These are not cut evenly, so I'll have to recut them. You need um, something to measure. So either a yardstick or a ruler. Um, something to measure. You need something to mark with, either your marking pen or chalk. I use chalk. You need a small piece of elastic. As again, I explained, I use this gold elastic. It's a lot faster and easier. But I'll show you what you have to do if you don't have uh, um, the, the gold elastic, which is hard to find. Um, if you want fringe on the bottom of your maniple and stole, then you need some fringe. This is very long. I think I'll get a shorter one. This looks like four inches, six, four, six, four or six inches. You really only need an inch or two inches. Two inches is your most common. Um, why, why fringe? You don't have to have it. it makes a nice simple uh, vestment not to use it, but it does add weight literal, literally weight, uh, both artistically, but also literally weight to both the maniple and the stole so that it has some, some pull down on it. Um, and most priests do like it with fringe. But again, you might want to ask your priest if he cares one way or the other. You need, to, of course, the, as always, stitch witchery, both sizes, the, the wide and the narrow and scissors for trimming. 
and you need something to put to decorate your pieces. Now, you can use any. You can not use lots of different things. You can use crosses. This is like a. a this is a one and a half inch cross. You could use three inch cross. Um, you need, or you can use an applique. Like I have, I made these appliques to go on mine. You can use the trim. For example, I could run this trim across the bottom of my stole or maniple. Here's the stole. Push that up out of the way. I could use, can't see it on here, so let me see if I can get this where you can see it. You can run the trim across and center one of these designs right in it right in it and then have your fringe hanging down here with space on both sides or even run it all the way down by the fringe whatever you want you could if your your uh, trim has um, a pattern like a cross pattern in it or like in a circle or a diamond or whatever you could cut that out and satin stitch it around the edges to the to your to your maniple and stole and your bursts and your chalice veil so um, you can make, you can use narrow trim, like this trim though, it wouldn't show up on this one very well, but you could make a cross, two pieces of this crisscrossing to make a cross, satin stitch over the ends or turn them under to make points. Um, that would work too. You, you have lots of options or nothing at all. It's not required. There's very little required as far as vestments are concerned. Um, I'm going to be using these appliques, and as you see, they're not cut out, and I purposely did that so you could, I could show you how to cut them out. Um, you need, if you're using appliques or whatever you're using to decorate, you need six. One for each end of the stole, one for each end of the maniple, that's four. One for the burst and one for the chalice veil, so you need six six items. Uh, if you're using crosses like this, you would six take crosses. Uh, if you were using the trim across, then you really just using the trim. You don't need six of anything. You just enough trim, enough length of trim to, to, to work. All right. You trim around right next to separate these. You trim close to the, the satin stitch line, with this, which is red on here. I made, made these red, navy, blue, and gold to match the trim and the, the colors in the applique. Uh, the MR is, means Maria Regina, which is Our Lady's title, her queenly title. It's Mary Queen, like Elizabeth R. would sign her, you know, Elizabeth Regina, whatever the Latin is for Elizabeth. Um, so it's our lady's title. You just trim close around the edge and discard the rest. Uh, I don't think you need to see me trimming all of these, but I do want to show you how to do the other type of applique, and then I'll come back and trim all of these out. If there's any jump stitches, that's these loose stitches here, you cut them off. They're made, if you buy them from, if you buy appliques from me, you'll often get them with, with jump stitches. Sorry about that, but it takes too long to cut them all. I cut most of them, but I'll miss some. And I never cut them on the back. It doesn't really matter. But if it bothers you, help yourself, cut them off. But I'm not. All right, this type of this type of applique. No, it's not like a tissue paper, but it's not really tissue paper. It's a it's a dissolvable stabilizer. That means that it dissolves in water. Now, if you put these in water, the the, the stabilizer would just disappear, but it's made out of a glue. And the glue goes into the threads. And it'll make this kind of hard, like almost like cardboard. And um, so you usually have to end up um, cutting them out, 
not cutting them out. You usually have to end up um, soaking them several times. Uh, once to dissolve it and then maybe twice more with warm water to get all the glue out of it. I don't like to do that. I, I mean, it's a lot of work. Um, it's work that you really don't need to do. What I do is, and I usually send, if people order these from me, I usually send you a paper explaining how to do this, but I want to show you. Um, you, you, I cut off all the excess as much as I can, um, all the excess stabilizer. Just like as if I were cutting out, you know, paper dolls. Um, most of you ladies have probably done that either for, with your own children or when you were a child. I think it's, it's almost a lost art. I don't see paper dolls in stores anymore. We used to, we used to hang out at the drugstore waiting for new ones to come in. Uh, we loved paper dolls, um, which I think trained us to be good cutters, maybe. Um, when I got to school, I had no cut, trouble cutting things on the line. That was, remember at school you had to learn how to cut things on lines? So you could cut out all these things. All right, so what you do is cut out the excess, and then I take a little water, and can see this. I need to move down a little further. Take a little water and a wash rag. Um, I wet the wash rag. Now the, if, if you were to look closely at this, you, can, you might see that there is still a little bit right at the edge of this like, tissue stuff. And all I do is take the wash rag and go over the edges of that and it dissolves right away. And uh, goes into the wash rag instead of into the, which I could throw in the washing machine later. And I just go around the edges all around, and this only takes a couple of, maybe a minute at most to go all the way around and just wipe the edges. And in doing so, wipe off all this excess stabilizer. And it leaves a nice soft cross as opposed to the cardboard hard one that you get if you soaked this. And let the glue and let the glue go into the into the threads. Uh, it take it, you know, it's a little bit longer to cut out. I mean, if I was going to soak it, I'd just cut it as far as here, maybe, and then soak it. But I just I'm I cut out I cut away all the excess, and then I just go around, and then it's done. And that's ready to sew down. This this cross, and I usually I usually um, embroider them down. Uh, but this time I'm going to use um, this 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 type of cross. I have two of them. I thought I had two here, but maybe I only brought one. Yeah, I do have two. And I'll do the same with this one. Cut it out and and. Brush the edges with water, and um, and then I'll show you before I sew them down where they go. So let me cut the rest of my appliques. Just my alarm. All right, I have cut out my appliques. Here's my six appliques ready to go. Put them aside. My two crosses for the neck. Uh, they don't have to be gold. They could be blue or black or whatever, you know, whatever color you want them to be. Again, they can be hand embroidered or uh, use trim again at the neck as well. That's where these are going to go. I'll show you in a minute. First thing I'm going to do is uh, press open the seam that I sewed on the stole. and the lining. This is the stole. And this is where the cross is going to go, right here. Right here. So um, I can do that right now. Um, I, the here you would want your really small um, stitch witchery or steam a seam. These want to get tangled together.
Again, you just need a little piece of it to go underneath the back, rather like we did with the, the one on the front. I'm going to put one going one direction and a piece going the other way. Make sure it's underneath, otherwise it will get stuck to the iron. I'm just going to go right in the middle. Right there. And I'm going to put a pin just for the fun of it. All right. So that needs to get that that will have to get sewn down. So I can put that aside to sew. I'm going to press the the lining open. having more trouble with that stitch witchery this time. Alright, so that needs to be put aside for when we have the way we put it together. The manifold doesn't need to have it sewn, so I can put it aside. Uh, the, this manifold what doesn't need to be sewn, but it does need to cross. So I'm going to turn the right side up, find the middle. here. This is where it will go. Uh, two pieces of this. Stay out of my way. I've never had that much trouble with that stitch witchery as I have this time. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing sometimes. So I'm just putting a piece both directions and it's going to go, I think it goes right there. Yes. Right here. 